the Supreme God incarnate. Let us bow down to Him with great devotion, with great love. Let us pray to Him to make our spiritual life successful. Let us pray to Him to remove all our impurities, to make the path clear so that we may march onwards and reach the goal in this life itself. Vedantic approach is very much needed in modern times It prescribes different method to get rid of ignorance. As Sri Ramakrishna has clearly pointed out, Who is said to be spiritual? Who is said to be the spiritual aspirant? It is he who has set his goal as the realization of God. He who has determined to accomplish this goal in this life is said to be spiritual seeker. One of the devotees asked Sri Ramakrishna, Shall we succeed in spiritual life? Please tell us what our way is. Page number 488, Chapter 25, Gospel. Sri Ramakrishna told him in very clear terms. He could feel their yearning. Sri Ramakrishna recognized it. It is very important that he should have yearning for liberation. If an aspirant has yearning, that's enough for him to realize God. Perform your duties in the world but keep your mind always fixed on God. Both are important. You have to perform your duties. That's first important quality, essential practice you should do, doing your duties properly. Whatever you do, do it thoroughly well. then it makes you ready to fix your mind on God. You will be able to accomplish duties properly provided your mind is kept on God. Without fixing the mind on God, 
you will not be able to perform the duties conducive to your spiritual welfare. That means you will have to maintain the zeal that you will certainly able to see God in this very life. It means in and through all your activities your mind should be always directed towards God. Whatever you are doing it must be always followed by the Divine name of God. That prevents you from all incoming troubles. Since you are always thinking of God while doing duties, God will take care of everything. You don't have to worry about. That's very important point. If you don't engage part of your mind in thinking God. Simply if you are doing activities, there may be that you may become more and more egoistic and you may lose the path. No. You lose the spiritual path, you tend to become egoistic and jealous because you have not been thinking of God while doing the duties. If the mind is distracted or allow your mind to drift away from spiritual ideas, it will be difficult for you to accomplish your spiritual goal that is seeing God in this very life. Success or failure lies in your own earnestness and efforts. If you wear out your life in eating, sleeping and sense pleasures and in idle talk and gossip, no doubt all these things will give some kind of result and that result is misery. You will reap misery. Apply yourself totally. Put all your energy with all your heart and soul for realizing God. As long as you have strength and vigor left in your body and mind. Never for any reason slacken your efforts. Many, many times we become frustrated on account of not doing practice properly. So it should be very important, it should be borne in mind that always we must be keep doing spiritual practices. Swami Vivekananda one of the great disciples of Sri Ramakrishna, he said, everything lies in the preparation. And he explains it by giving an example. How long 
does it take to strike a light only a second but how long it takes to make the candle he gives another example how long does it take to eat a dinner perhaps half an hour but hours to prepare the food we want to strike the light in a second but we forget that the making of the candle is a chief thing so what is needed is energetic study practice of disciplines without discipline no spiritual life swami vivekananda warns the great danger is that everyone wants to jump at the highest ideal but jumping is not the way that ends only in a fall we are bound down here and we have to break our chains slowly that is the warning given by swami vivekanand who realized god in his very life who could see god who could talk to god by the grace of shri ramakrishna he talked with divine mother in the same way lord krishna has said in the gita his thundering spiritual precept to all spiritual seekers of all times is that one should elevate oneself by one's own self and that there is no other friend or foe than oneself this is a famous verse very frequently i quote this it is so relevant and so important in our spiritual life uddhare atmanatmanam natmanam avasadayet atmaiva khyatmano bandhu atmaiva ripuratmana let a man be lifted up by his own self let him not lower himself for he himself is his friend and he himself is his enemy and the next verse lord krishna says bandhuradatmanastasya yenatmayo atmana chitah anatmanastu shatrutve vatedatmayo shatruvat to him who has conquered himself by himself his own self is a friend but to him who has not conquered himself his own self is hostile like an external enemy this is a great message here the person is taught that he is the maker of his spiritual destiny that means how must you have to put forth your effort to unfold yourself fully in spiritual life in yoga sutra also patanjali maharshi the great yogi says success in yoga is speedy for the extremely energetic the success of yoga differs according as the means they adopt or mild medium or intense teeva samvega naam asanna ha mrudu madhyadi matratva tatopi vishesha these are the aphorisms said by patanjali maharshi 
ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಯು ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಅಚೀವ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಬೈ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ಅಟ್ ಸಚ್ ಎ ಸ್ಲೋ ಪೇಸ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಸ್ಟರ್ನ್ ರೆನನ್ಸಿಯೇಷನ್ can you achieve anything by counting 15 months as a year you seem to have no strength no grit you are as mushy as flattened rice soaked in soaked in milk be up and doing gird your loins these are the words of shri ramakrishna how very important it is that we should all heartedly engage our whole being in the spiritual devotional practices all through our life we must carry on until and unless we meet with success oh we may we may be doing whatever activities we may be doing whatever duties but all the time we must be thinking of god that's the way to keep the mind clean if the mind is not clean how can you expect success in spiritual life a copper vessel is there first you have to apply the polish and then you have to rub it once i saw in our shrine room some copper vessels articles were given for polishing for two people both of them finished the job and kept the things on the table one was looking very bright the other one was not as bright as the first one then i simply asked how is it one looks very bright the other one is not looking so bright as the first one the answer was the first one looked brighter because more pressure was given while rubbing that means the more effort you do the more you put your mind the more you struggle the more clear the mind becomes mind becomes crystal clear it becomes spotless when it becomes spotless then you can see god face to face shri ramakrishna would get up very early in the morning 3:30 3 o'clock etc he would go and see if the disciples were sleeping he would go them and wake them up once he went to see whether holy mother got up sometimes he would throw water so that they may get up immediately and you would tell the disciples go and do meditate go and do meditate now you would send them to panchavati so unless you act in a very energetic way it's not possible to achieve the goal in this very life so shri ramakrishna trained all the disciples that way and how important it is we are all the followers of vedanta that means you must be very strict in following the spiritual disciplines then you will get wonderful results you must get 
So preparation is very important. As Swami Vivekananda said, how much time is taken to prepare a candle? It's very easy to light the candle in a second. Preparation of candle, how much time? In the same way, preparing the mind properly, purifying the mind, that is your task. Your whole attention should be on that point. You should be ready enough to receive God in your heart. That's the way. So, we should definitely practice spiritual disciplines. Of course, yearning is very important. That's the basic foundation of spiritual life. And next is put all your energy in trying to do spiritual sadhanas, then surely you will be able to have success in spiritual life. And Sri Ramakrishna is assuring you will certainly have success. But it depends upon the intensity of your practice. That means to do intense practice you must have strong body and strong mind. That means you must have good health. That means you must maintain your health properly. All that follows. So, we should practice all these things very carefully and then we should accomplish our goal. Page 489 Sri Ramakrishna was sitting in Balram Bose's house in Calcutta. It was a day of the return car festival. The Lord of the Universe was worshipped in Balram's house as Jagannath. There was a small car in the house for use during the car festival. Balram's father was a pious Vaishnava who devoted most of his time to prayer and meditation in his garden house at Vrindavan. He also studied devotional books and enjoyed the company of devotees. Balram had brought his father to Calcutta to meet the Master. Sri Ramakrishna was in a very happy mood. Seated near him were Ram, Balram, Balram's father, M. Manmohan and several young devotees. He was conversing with them. Master said to Balram's father and the others, the Bhakti Mala is one of the Vaishnava books. It is a fine book. It describes the lives of the various Vaishnava devotees. But it is one-sided. At one place the author found peace of mind only after compelling Bhagavati, the Divine Mother, to take her initiation according to the Vaishnava discipline. Once I spoke highly of Vaishnava Charan to Mathur and persuaded him to invite Vaishnava Charan to his house. Mathur welcomed him with great courtesy. He fed his guest from silver plates. Then, do you know what happened? Vaishnava said in front of Mathur, You will achieve nothing whatsoever in spiritual life unless you accept Krishna as your ideal. Mathur was a follower of Shakta cult and a worshipper of the Divine Mother. At once his face became crimson. I nudged Vaishnava Charan. I understand that the Bhagavata also contains some statements like that. I hear that it is said that trying to cross the ocean of the world without accepting Krishna as the ideal deity he is like trying to cross a great sea by holding to the tail of a dog. Each sect magnifies its own view. The Shaktas too try to belittle the Vaishnavas. The Vaishnavas say 
that Krishna alone is the helmsman to take one across the ocean of the world. The Sakta retort, Oh yes, we agree to that. Our Divine Mother is the Empress of the Universe. Why should she bother about a ferry boat? Therefore she has engaged that fellow Krishna for the purpose. All love. Besides, how vain people are about their own sects. There are weavers in the villages near Kamarpakor. Many of them are Vaishnavas and like to talk big. They say, which Vishnu does he worship? The preserver? Oh, we wouldn't touch him. Or, which Shiva are you talking about? We accept the Atma Rama Shiva. Or again, please explain to us which Hari you worship. They spin their yarn and indulge in talk like that. Rati's mother, Rani Katyayani's favorite confidant, is a follower of Vaishnava Charan. She is a bigoted Vaishnava. She used to visit me very frequently and none could outdo her in devotion. One day, she noticed me eating the prasad from the Kali temple. Since then, I have not seen even her shadow. He is in, indeed a real man who has harmonized everything. Most people are one-sided. But I find that all opinions point to the one. All views, the Shakta, the Vaishnava, the Vedanta, have that one for the center. He who is formless is again endowed with form. It is he who appears in different forms. The attributeless Brahman is my father. God with attributes is my mother. Whom shall I blame? Whom shall I praise? The two pans of the scales are equally heavy. He who is described in the Vedas, he is also described in the Tantras and the Puranas. All of them speak about the one Satchidananda, the Nitya and the Leela, are the two aspects of the one reality. It is described in the Vedas as Om Satchidananda Brahman. In the Tantras as Om Satchidananda Shiva, the ever pure Shiva. And in the Puranas as Om Satchidananda Krishna. All the scriptures, the Vedas, the Puranas and the Tantras speak only of one Satchidananda. It is stated in the Vaishnava scriptures that it is Krishna himself who has become Kali. Sri Ramakrishna went to the porch for a new minutes and then returned. As he was going out, Vaishnava, as he was going out, Vishwa, Vishwamahara's daughter, six or seven years old, saluted him. On returning to the room, the master began talking to the little girl and her companions who were of the same age. The child said to the master, I saluted you and you didn't even notice it. Master said smilingly, Did you? I really did not notice. Child, then wait, I want to salute you again. The other foot too. Sri Ramakrishna laughed and sat down. He returned the salute and bowed to the child, touching the ground with his forehead. He asked her to sing. The child said, I swear I don't sing. When the master pressed her again, she said, Should you press me when I said I swear? The master was very happy with the children and sang light and frivolous songs to entertain them. He sang, Come, let me braid your hair, lest your husband should scold you when he beholds you. The children and the devotees laughed. Master said to the devotees, The Paramahams is like a five years old child. He sees everything filled with consciousness. At one time, I was staying at Kamarpukor when Shivaram, a nephew of the Master, was four or five years old. 
One day he was trying to catch grasshoppers near the pond. The leaves were moving. To stop their rustling, he said to the leaves, Hush, hush, I want to catch a grasshopper. Another day, it was stormy. He trained hard. Shuram was with me inside the house. There were flashes of lightning. He wanted to open the door and go out. I scolded him and stopped him, but still he peeped out. Now and then, when he saw the lightning, he exclaimed, There, uncle, they are striking matches again. The Paramahamsa is like a child. He cannot distinguish between a stranger and a relative. He isn't particular about worldly relationships. One day Shivaram said to me, Uncle, you are, Uncle, are you my father's brother or his brother-in-law? The Paramahamsa is like a child. He doesn't keep any track of his whereabouts. He sees everything as Brahman. He is indifferent to his own movements. Shivaram went to Hridaya's house to see the Durga Puja. He slipped out of the house and wandered away. A passerby saw the child who was then only four years old and asked, Where do you come from? He couldn't say much. He only said the word hut. He was speaking of the big hut in which the image of the Divine Mother was being worshipped. The stranger asked him further, Whom are you living with? He only said the word brother. Sometimes Paramahamsa behaves like a madman. When I experienced the divine madness, I used to worship my own sexual organ as a Shiva phallus. But I can't do that now. A few days after the dedication of the temple of Dakshineshwar, a madman came there who was really a sage, endowed with knowledge of Brahman. He had a bamboo twig in one hand and a potted mango plant in the other and was wearing torn shoes. He didn't follow any social conventions. After bathing in the Ganges, he did not perform any religious rites. He ate something that he carried in a corner of his wearing cloth. Then he entered the Kali temple and chanted hymns to the deity. The temple trembled. Aladari was then in the shrine. The madman was not allowed to eat at the guest house, but he paid no attention to this slight. He searched for food in the rubbish heap where the dogs were eating crumbs from the discarded leaf plates. Now and then he pushed the dogs aside to get his crumbs. The dogs didn't mind either. Aladari followed him and asked, Who are you? Are you a Purna Jnani? A perfect knower of Brahman. The madman whispered, Shh, Yes, I am a Purna Jnani. My heart began to palpitate as Haldari told me about it. I clung to Hriday. I said to the Divine Mother, Mother, shall I have to pass through such a state? We all went to see the man. He spoke words of great wisdom to us but behaved like a madman before others. Haladari followed him a great way when he left the garden. After passing the gate, he said to Haladari, What else shall I say to you? When you no longer make any distinction between the water of, his, water of this pool and the water of the Ganges, then you will know that you have perfect knowledge. Saying this, he walked rapidly away. Sri Ramakrishna began to talk with him. Other devotees too were present. Master said to him, How do you feel about Shashadhar? Yam said, He is very nice. Master, He is very intelligent, isn't he? Yam said, Yes, sir. He is very erudite. Master said, according to the Gita, there is a power of God in one who is respected and honored by many. But Shishadhar has still a few things to do. What will he accomplish with mere scholarship? 
he needs to practice some austerity it is necessary to practice some spiritual discipline spiritual practice is done according to the ways shown by the guru and uh, the disciple should uh, be in constant touch with the guru and post him with all his uh, spiritual practices and uh, if he is carrying on the spiritual disciplines thoroughly well certainly it uh, gives him confidence and uh, the purpose of doing disciplines is to purify the mind once the mind gets purified then intellect becomes clear then there will be clarity of thinking and that makes easy to go further in the spiritual path and you will be able to understand the spiritual ideas in a more significant way so spiritual disciplines are very essential and prescribed uh, methods are there to follow the disciplines the more we are strict about disciplines the better the results we get that's true so clear understanding comes only through proper disciplines and discussion with the guru and reading of scriptures all these things help us in a spiritual way some of you must make your mind your friend then everything becomes easy mind will become your friend only when the mind is freed from worldly tendencies only when the mind is freed from worldly way of thinking then it becomes a friend once it becomes a friend then everything is very easy that's that's what shri ramakrishna said you carry on all the duties in the world but keep the mind in god then if you perform the activities with the idea of duty then it purifies your heart that is the meaning of performing duty so duty is well performed if your mind is set on god then you can through many things you can learn many things happen around you not on account of yourself but on account of some external factors things might happen uh, they are not they may not be helpful but those things happen only to so that you can learn through those things one has to learn and shri ramakrishna said develop renunciation stern renunciation is required stern stern renunciation means strong renunciation you don't desire anything other than god that's called stern renunciation that should be our goal and you are doing things so secondary the primary thing is to realize god to see god in his life no serving humanity everything is okay that you are doing for the sake of realizing god without that concept of god what is the use of performing the duties tell me what does it serve in what way it will help you spiritually if you don't have the concept of god if your mind is not set in that direction simply doing the service will not lead you to liberation is it not so you must have god god is a central figure you are serving them as the manifestations of god they are all part and parcel of god i am serving god in image why not i serve god in human being god is god is present in many forms he is present in human form too that way so only idea is the attitude of service <coughs> the attitude of <coughs> selfless love 
all comes to the mind only when you think of god when when you think you are doing everything for his sake then it becomes very clear that's the idea you see it is not that uh, don't think uh, working for your liberation uh, is not to be done don't think that way after all by liberating yourself what are you doing you become the instrument of god when you become the instrument of god you are able to share your love with everyone so liberation from that as liberation means you are liberated from the world you are liberated from the world and the worldly ways of life you are liberated from that from that bondage you are free as a free soul you can move anywhere you want you can go anywhere and love anybody serve anyone you develop that concept that's the idea of liberation that's the idea of liberation that's why shri ram krishna said your goal in human life is to realize god but at the same time he told vivekanand when vivekananda wanted to uh, completely absorb himself in deep meditation he wanted to be in that state permanently then shri ram krishna said no 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 you have to work for the humanity it's all right to have that uh, nirvikalp samadhi it is very sublime no doubt but you have got a mission you have to help these people who are suffering to raise them up so do do your mission so shri ram krishna is assigning him the duty do that duty now his duty is to serve the humanity do that give a new ideal to the people what is that new ideal serving humanity you will realize god atma no mokshartham jagadhitaya ch that's what he exactly did that's why he came to america without penny without any preparation he came just with the idea of serving humanity he loved human beings he loved everyone he knew very well that this country needed most the spiritual ideas so he came to give the spiritual ideas when the work was done then he left his body and went to his source from where he came thinking of god and doing the work means you must pay all attention to what you are doing but thinking of god is undercurrent behind what you are doing you are always thinking of him mind has the capacity to think many things though i am speaking my mind is maybe somewhere thinking something else we see many times that you are doing something no doubt but your mind is on something else so instead of putting the mind on something else put the mind on god himself that makes you more concentrated in your work and uh, thinking of god means you are thinking of him with whom you are talking that concept will make will keep your mind clean and pure you will be able to cultivate that uh, good attitude in yourself and you'll be able to do the duty properly because you are thinking of god and you are offering it as worship to him whatever you are doing is an offering to god that concept will come so you are doing everything for the master suppose you are going to a company you are going working there you are working for whom you are working for the company in the same way you are working here for the sake of god so that's the idea so instead of allowing the mind to think something else 
instead of allowing the mind to distract itself to other things one way to keep the mind undistracted is to think of your chosen deity to think of the divine name so that the undercurrent will be peaceful the layer so superficially you may be working you may be doing things but inwardly you are thinking of the divine and because of that right thinking your actions also will be right and you will be doing good also that way you will not become egoistic and uh, you will not be uh, incurring any sins that way that's the idea chant the name of the lord and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire worldly lust raging furiously within o name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart opening its cup to knowledge of itself o self drown deep in the waves of his bliss tasting his nectar at every step bathing in his name that bought for weary souls Various are thy names, O Lord, in each and every name thy power resides. No times are set, no rites are needful for chanting of thy name. So vast is thy mercy, how huge then is my wretchedness, who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name. O my mind, be humbler than a blade of grass, be patient and forbearing like a tree, take no honor to thyself, give honor to all, chant unceasingly the name of the Lord. O Lord and soul of the universe mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue the playthings of lust or the toys of fame as many times as i may be reborn grant me o lord a steadfast love for thee a drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant o sweet one in thy mercy consider him as dust beneath thy feet o how i long for the day when instant separation from thee o lord will be as a thousand years When my heart burns with its desire, and the world without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet let me be, in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of thine arms, nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence, though it tears my soul asunder. O thou who stillest the hearts of thy devotees, do with me what thou wilt, for thou art my heart's beloved, thou and thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real. lead us from darkness to light and lead us from death to immortality may all be free from dangers may all realize what is good may all be actuated by noble thoughts may all rejoice everywhere may all be happy may all be free from disease may all realize what is good may none be subject to misery may the wicked become virtuous may the virtuous attain tranquility may the tranquil be free from bonds may the freed make others free May good be dead all people may the sovereign righteously rule the earth may all beings ever attain what is good may all the worlds be prosperous and happy may the clouds pour rain in time may the earth be blessed with crops may all countries be freed from calamity may holy men live without fear may the lord the destroyer of sins the presiding deity of all sacred books be satisfied for he being pleased the whole universe becomes pleased He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied.